freaking hate summer. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are all doing really, really well. So here we are with my summer read and watch list. And if you guys have been around here a while, you know that I absolutely hate summer. I hate it. I hate the heat. I hate how light it is, you know, late at night. Um, I live in Alberta, in Can Canada, so it's usually hot and dry and very, very smoky from wildfires and all that kind of stuff. I would even rather have an extended spring or an extended winter if I didn't have to deal with the heat. But one thing that does help me every single year is the type of books that I decide to read and the type of movies that I watch, um, all summer themed, that help me through until spooky season. So, um, as you guys know, I've been really, really struggling with my reading this year. Uh, I think I've kind of gotten to the bottom of it. Um, I won't get into it too much here, but you know, I'm not young anymore and I'm entering into a new phase in my life and uh, new symptoms that I've been dealing with has kind of impacted the things that I love and especially my reading. So I've put together a pile of possibilities. This is not a TBR. I'm not planning on reading all of these books and you know me, I'm probably going to end up picking up a couple of other things that are not on this list. But I wanted to put together, um, you know, a varied list of adult, middle grade, YA that are really going to pique my interest that all have summer themes. And uh, I've included movies on this list as well, which I don't think I've ever done a, a summer movie list before. But Matthew and I have been having so much fun putting this together. We're both really, really in the mood for slashers lately. So I hope you guys stick around and enjoy this list. And if you have any summer uh, uh, reading or watch recommendations, please leave them down below because you know my list is ever expanding and of course I'm going to be reading and watching other things as well. So give me some suggestions down below. So of course because it's me I had to put some ghosty books on this list. You guys know I have an undying love for nonfiction ghost stories. And uh, both of these are campfire themed. So this one is out of the Ghost House series uh, number 16, which is one of my favorite series to collect. This is Campfire Ghost Stories. I have read this one before and it's all very familiar stories. So it's all very much based on urban legends and that sort of thing. And um, you know, it's stories that I just really, really love and they're very comforting. So I thought this would be perfect to put on the list because, you know, it's going to be very, very nostalgic for me. I used to love telling campfire uh, ghost stories around campfires when I was a kid. I was a girl guide, which is kind of like Girl Scouts. And we used to go to camp every summer and, you know, every night we would have like a fire and tell ghost stories and everything. Same thing with sleepovers, summertime sleepovers where you're playing spotlight and that sort of thing and telling all kinds of ghost stories. So this is very, very nostalgic for me and I'm hoping that it's going to spark that love of reading these stories again. And the other one is by Barbara Smith. This is Ghostly Campfire Stories of Western Canada. And this is a new one to me. I found this one not long ago actually at the thrift store and I featured it in a recent video when I did my bookshelf tour of my ghosty shelf so if you haven't checked that out make sure you go check that out because it's one of my favorite videos I love talking about ghost stories and um so very very small and so I figured I would put both of these on my list so I would have some nonfiction wrapped in with my summer slashers so really really excited to get to both of these it's actually not too, too warm today. Um, we're supposed to be in for some rain this weekend, but, you know, over the past few days, it's been like 25 degrees, which is, for me as a Canadian, I do find it really hot, and um, our air conditioning has been kicking in. So I've been enjoying these triple shot lattes. Matthew makes them for me. Um, I put in three shots of espresso and uh, my oat milk, and they're amazing. And so this is something that also helps get me through the summer months, is my triple shot latte. So next up, um, I've kind of done these in categories. So the first category was ghost stories, and um, I might actually add a couple of more to that one. I'm not really too sure. Um, I do have lots of Mary Downing Hawn and books, books like that that would go really, really well into that category also. And then the second category is summer camp. Um, like I said, I used to go to summer camp as a kid and I absolutely loved it. I love anything to do with summer camps and watching movies that has to do with it and, you know, just the bonds of friendship and all of the kind of shenanigans and everything people get into. So these are all kind of in the middle grade sphere. So we have one out of the Camp Sunnyside Friends series. This looks super, super cute. So this, you know, I read 
YA middle grade kids books adults all the things so I wanted to put some middle grade on there as well so this is uh, Cabin Six Plays Cupid and this is a series by Marilyn Kay I only have a couple out of the, this series um, so it's very much like a spinoff of Babysitter's Club sort of thing and it says the girls in Cabin Six couldn't believe it their counselor Carolyn had returned her boyfriend's fraternity pin she said that she wasn't upset about the breakup but Megan had read enough teen romances to know that Carolyn's brave smile was covering a broken heart. So the Camp Sunnyside friends decide to come up with a plan to get Carolyn and Teddy back together again. Sounds so good. I love these like cheesy little stories. They just bring me so much joy and you know I do deal with a lot of anxiety and stuff during the regular workday and everything so these really really help me unwind. Um, I do have one out of the Ghost Twins series. I actually found this one the other day at the thrift store. So, so excited. So I have three out of the Ghost Twins series now. So this is the Haunted Campground Mystery. And it says, Robbie and Becca are twins. They have a St. Bernard. 50 years ago, they became ghosts. Now their house is a vacation rental. What do these ghosts do with their time? Haunt on unsuspecting guests and they actually um, do go on a camping adventure it says the twins and thatch decide to join the girls and their leader on their adventures but that's when strange things start to happen is lake park campground haunted so that's super cute too and then i picked two out of goosebumps um <laughs> I love picking up a Goosebumps in the summertime. Uh, Camp Jelly Jam is my favorite Goosebumps book, if you're wondering. So we have The Curse of Camp Cold Lake, and this is number 56. And then we have Ghost Camp, which this is one of my favorite um, Goosebumps covers, actually. I love it. So, so cute. And this one is number 45, and it says, Be All That You Can't See. So that's a play I'll play on be all you can be I guess from like Boy Scouts and stuff so a couple of goosebumps to throw in the pile as well and then the next category is like lake and beach sort of adventures so I guess a couple of the ones that I just talked about can also fit into this category as well um, but these are super super cute so I do have an apple paperback this one is super super vintage just look at her outfit and of course it has the classic apple paperback um, had her on there and I believe this is right back from 1980 this one is 1984 actually and um, so this is Baby Snatcher by Susan Terrace and it says Laurel arrives at Hoop Lake expecting her summer to be boring as usual she's surprised when she finds new people at the lake a young sculptor named Ivan and his baby baby daughter Doe Laurel is happy to babysit for Doe and to do other chores around the house Ivan seems to really need her he's good-looking gentle and treats her like an adult Laurel can't stop herself from wishing the summer would last forever. So, I mean, just by the title, I guess she suspects maybe that this little child has been kidnapped. So that sounds like a fun adventure. And then I did want to pick at least one out of either Fear Street or Point Horror. So I went with this one, Beach, uh, beach Party, sorry, I was going to say Beach House. Some come to party, some come to die. So of course we start out with a normal, you know, beach party with the boys and girls and the romances and crushes and all of that. And it says on the back, but the party summer takes a nasty turn when Karen realizes that someone is out to spoil all the fun. As the beach party gets wilder and wilder, Karen realizes that someone very close to her is too close, close enough to kill. Will the next beach party be her last? So of course, this is gonna be all the cheesy fun of R.L. Stein, and I'm so, so excited to get to this one as well. And then within the same category, but kind of on its own a little bit, I did pick out two of the Babysitter's Club Super Specials, um, like the summer editions. So we've got Babysitter's Island Adventure, this is number four, and Babysitter's Summer Vacation, Super Special number two. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna go with, but I'm leaning towards this one because it does have like that summer camp theme. So of course, uh, the girl are at Camp Mohawk and I believe they're like junior counselors oh counselors in training and they get into all kinds of shenanigans and of course there's romance and there's a boys camp and, and all of the things so I think it's gonna be this one I put this one in the pile as well I'll let you guys know which one I get to 
and I think right now I don't have um, really any streaming services. I have Amazon Prime, that's about it. But um, the episode that they did of the Babysitter's Club on Netflix was really, really good. And I might get Netflix just for a month so I can rewatch the Babysitter's Club show because I am going to be doing a little bit of a themed vlog as well. One of the movies fits in there also. So yeah, of course I had to put a Babysitter's Club in there because it's just so nostalgic. And I love how like different chapters kind of you know are from different points of view of each one of the girls and it has their names up on the corner that is very very nostalgic to me my parents had a cabin when I was young I had to spend a lot of time there in the summers and I hated it and uh, so I read a lot of babysitters club um, during my time there and of course now I wish I could have that place back um, as an adult but of course I can't so at least I can dive into the babysitters club books for a little bit of nostalgia and then the next category that I put together was uh, like coming of age stories and this one is one that I picked up a couple of years ago and I, I still haven't gotten to it and this is one of my favorite covers that I have in my collection actually so this is Summer of Night by Dan Simmons and so we're seeing these um, boys on their bikes out through a window and it has a wonderful die cut cover and it says school's out now it's time to learn fear and of course you have the wonderful um, art on the inside with the die cut there and uh, so <laughs> I'm finally putting this one into my pile for this year the only thing that's going to be really difficult for me is the text is a little bit tiny so I might see if I can find this one on digital copy or get it at the library like in a different edition but even if I can't, it's not too, too bad. But of course, this, you know, <laughs> revolves around boys um, in the summertime, and it actually takes place in 1960, and I love anything to do with the 60s. So I'm really, really super excited to read this one. So of course, it starts out with their normal summer fun and shenanigans and being on their bikes and doing all of the things. And it says on the back, from the silent depths of the old central school, a hulking fortress tinned with the mahogany scent of coffins, an invisible evil drifts outward, plunging Mike, Dwayne, Dale, Harlan, and Kevin into a war without boundary or mercy, where an eternal enemy owns the night. So that sounds fantastic. And like I said, I love anything to do with summertime uh, coming of age stories. I really, really love them. So this is one that's completely new to me. And as far as I know, I don't know anybody else who's read it. So please let me know if you've read this one and is it any good? So the next one is obviously a little bit intimidating. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to it or I might read it um, between physical and audio and just, you know, kind of take my time with it because it's very, very long. So I do have It by Stephen King. I've had this on my list a couple of times and, you know, never gotten to it because well, for first of all, it is a little bit intimidating, but also um, because of that one sewer scene, I'm not sure how well I'm gonna deal with it, but I do know it's coming, so hopefully I can just kind of flit over it and you know allow myself to enjoy the rest of the book. I've never read it before, obviously, but I have seen the original um, miniseries. I do own it, actually, and of course I saw the remake that came out a couple of years ago. What was that, 2019, 2020 sort of thing? I haven't seen the second uh, recent one, but I did watch the first one. I found it to be very, very long and I didn't enjoy it all that much, but I'm hoping that with actually reading it first, I can go back to uh, the one with Tim Curry and the newer one and uh, hopefully I can enjoy it a little bit more. So putting this one on the list, we'll see how it goes. Um, like I said, I might just take my time with it and read it between physical and audio. Maybe that'll help me with, you know, this chunk of chunk um, getting through it all. And then the last category is just kind of random summary sort of books. Um, one of them actually has nothing to do with uh, summer specifically, but I wanted to stick it on here because it's out of one of my favorite series. I just found another one at the thrift store and I'm really, really excited to read it and because I'm struggling so much with my reading. I'm hoping that will help kind of snap me out of it a little bit. So the first one is Summer of Fear by Lois Duncan. I actually haven't read any Lois Duncan before. I own a couple of her books now. Um, and obviously I've seen the movie adaptation of I Know What You Did Last Summer. Um, but I'm really excited to get into another one of her stories and just see how I like it. 
So this, like I said, is Summer of Fear, and it says, why is Rachel the only one that senses evil, the evil that surrounds Julia? So Rachel's cousin Julia comes to spend time with her, and she's like really weary, but Julia is making friends with everyone, everyone loves her, but Rachel is, is you know, a little bit weirded out, and she thinks something is a bit off. So this really reminds me of One Evil Summer, which I read a couple of years ago by R.L. Stein. Um, so we'll see how the two compare. Um, the synopsis this is almost exactly the same so I'm assuming this one came first because I know Lois Duncan was writing before R.L. Stein, but don't take my word for it I'll have to check it out um, but yeah the two seem very very similar so we'll give this one a go and see how much I like it and then I did put this one I had it on my TBR a couple of years ago my summer TBR and I uh, never ever got to it I love the cover on this book it's another one of my favorite covers in my collection just with the the pink and and the purple purple is my favorite color and he just looks like such a cool dude um, so this says this summer is going to be a real killer so the main character Roxy she loves everything to do with summer but I think she like breaks into somebody's house and does something but somebody sees it so they're like in on all of this revenge and trying to freak her out and it says and now someone is looking for Roxy someone who wants her dead so between this one and the other R.L. Stein we'll see if I get to both of them um they're both very similar uh both out of kind of that point horror collection and I love the little splatters on uh the little thriller splatters on on the spine here um some of my favorites in my collection so we'll see if I get to both of them but I want to get to at least one and then for the last two books on this list, I have a Sweet Valley Twins and Friends. So this one is The Ghost in the Bell Tower, one of their super chillers. So it says on the back, Midsummer Nightmare. When the Wakefield kids are invited to their Aunt Helen's Country Inn, Stephen and Jessica are determined to use the eerie old mansion to scare their sister Elizabeth into believing in ghosts. But no matter what Stephen and Jessica do, logical Elizabeth always figures out their tricks. Then things start happening that even Elizabeth can't explain, and all the Wakefield kids are afraid that the inn is really haunted. Will they make it through the summer sharing their vacation with an unfriendly ghost? So that sounds like a lot of fun. And then uh, I found a creepover book that I haven't read yet, and um, the Creepover series is one of my absolute favorites. I've talked about it constantly on the channel before. You guys know I have an undying love for this series. Haven't read them all. I've read a good chunk of them, um, and I actually sent them to my friend M from Dark Violet Dreams so she could share, share them with her kids. And I have to say, like, even though these are middle grade stories, some of them are genuinely scary. Like, they're really unsettling. They don't all come back around and have happy endings. It's great. And um, if you're wondering, no, you don't have to read these in order. Each one of the books revolves around a different set of characters. Um, so you don't need to read them in chronological order. So this one is number 16. And they do have this really cute feature on the back here. It's the creepo meter. So this one is a level four on the creepo meter which is sleep with the lights on and once you get up into the level four and level fives they are genuinely scary and I love these books so because I found this one last week um, at the thrift store I had to throw it in on my summer list I'm just so so excited to sit down and curl up with one of these and actually I wanted to mention this one um, <laughs> Every single time I do like a Summer Reads themed video, I always talk about Fat Camp by James Sabata, which is probably my favorite summer read. It is a slasher, it's a camp slasher, and um, it's just fantastic. It has a lot of twists and turns. It's genuinely uh, adventurous and you're not really sure who the killer is and all of this, and it really has, you know, all of the wonderful things about like, 13, 14 year old boys going to camp together and you know obviously it's a fat camp they're all overweight and a lot of them use their weight to their advantage against the uh, the killer that's picking them off one by one. So this book also has a lot of heart it's also very much a coming of age story. I might stick it into my summer reads because I've been wanting to reread it I think it's been about three years since I read it the first time. So I just wanted to mention this one to you guys because, like I said, I have such an undying love for this. I know Cameron Cheney really loves this uh, this book as well. And I believe Kelsey from Slime and Slashers has read this one also. And uh, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. So if you're looking for a light read that's really adventurous, it's funny, and it's just genuinely good horror, I would definitely recommend this one. 
Okay, so getting into my watch list, um, we actually started this weekend or last weekend um, watching our kind of summer slashers or our summer themed movies. Uh, I've really been enjoying watching movies uh, like lots of horror lately. I've also been watching a lot of kids movies, just two of my favorite uh, genres because I haven't been reading a whole lot. So I've just been really concentrating on getting my adventures through shows and, and movies that I really love. So uh, we started a couple of weeks ago and we did watch the original Friday the 13th in honor of Jason's birthday. And Matthew and I have been very much building up our physical media collection because I don't have streaming services anymore. So we had a great time and it just rekindles my whole love of classic slashers, which is something that like I, I really do need to get into watching again. Um, we just love throwing on the 70s and 80s slashers and it's it's just such a corny good time. So we're and then last night we actually finally got to Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Um, this was such a fun time. We love horror comedies and uh, this was just, I don't know, it, it was brilliant. It did get a, some kind of not so great reviews, but I thought it was an imaginative horror. It was entertaining. It had me hooked in from the beginning and uh, I definitely want to watch more from A24. Um, I still haven't seen Talk To Me, which is another one of theirs that got really, really good reviews. But as far as summer slashers go, this was like top notch. I thought it was top notch horror. It was cheesy. It was fun. It was funny. Um, and it had me guessing right until the very end. And I thought the ending was superb. And it, it really did rekindle my love of just really good movies. Uh, you know, there's there's not a whole lot of great stuff coming out lately you know in the past few years and everything is a prequel a sequel a remake whatever so it was very refreshing to get a newer style um, horror movie that had a lot of the classic elements and then of course because the 90s is when i discovered my love for horror we do have i know what you did last summer and i still know what you did last summer which is not a great one but the original is one of my favorites and uh i just finished up like a prom queen sort of themed reading vlog and uh, I did want to put this one in, in as well. So we might throw this one on this weekend because it does have uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar who plays. She's not like a, she's not a homecoming queen but she's like a harvest queen sort of thing. And this was one of the first uh, slashers that I had seen in the 90s and it was just right up my alley. So this is definitely going to be not only great for all of that summer slasher that I've been wanting lately but also the nostalgia because you know I'm looking for comfort especially in a time when I'm not doing so well. And uh, so I think that's really going to harken back to those days in the 90s that I absolutely loved. And another one that I think is a really underappreciated film is The Uninvited, um, about two sisters and um, they're living with their father like in this remote sort of like cabin mansion, like it's a really really big house and um, their mom has died and they're experiencing like this haunting and they're not really sure what's going on and of course daddy has a new uh, girlfriend and they're really suspecting that this his new wife is behind uh, their mother's death and she's behind a lot of the things going on and uh, so I think this one is a really really underappreciated horror I thoroughly enjoy this I really really love cheesy horror with a good plot twist and this one has both so we're definitely gonna be throwing this one on some point during the summer and then one that I am kind of embarrassed to admit that I've never seen before is Stand By Me. Um, I've, and I've even owned this for like the past year. I still haven't put it on. It doesn't feel like it's in here. Oh, it is. Um, so this is very much that whole like uh, coming of age summer theme that we've been talking about here that I absolutely love. And I'm positive that I'm going to love this one. So finally, finally putting this one on this year. You guys are going to laugh <laughs> that Jaws uh, is completely chewed up. Um, I haven't seen this one for years. And um, our puppy, Dozer, when we first got him, he was a rescue. And he got into my movie collection and he chewed the crap out of this one and Home Alone. And uh, so it has Dozer puppy bites, little nib nibs from when he was teething. And uh, he was a little bit anxious when we first got him as well. So I think it's hilarious that... Uh, the case is completely chewed up and it's Jaws and I think it just, you know, just adds to the whole thing. But another one that we haven't seen in years and years and I can't wait to put this one on. Another one that I own um, 
and this one is outside of the horror sphere but still very much in that uh, same sort of theme that I'm looking for is the Babysitter's Club movie. So we did talk about, you know, the Babysitter's Club super specials and uh, the, ni the 90s movie is one of my favorites. I loved the show that Netflix did as well. I was really super sad when they canceled it um, but I did find this one out at the thrift store and I do want to do kind of like a Babysitter's themed uh, sort of reading vlog at some point this summer so definitely definitely putting this one in there. And a couple of other uh, summer themed movies that I don't have as part of my collection right now but we will either uh, find it somewhere or we'll rent them. First up is The Addams Family Values and this one is definitely one of my favorites. I remember seeing it in the theater way way back in the day and uh, I also remember the giant cardboard cutout that was in my um, local video store and this one is just such a favorite and of course it has all of the feels that I'm looking for. Next up is Summer of 84, which is one that I haven't seen before, and this is a modern take on a mystery that happens in 1984, obviously. And a group of uh, boys decide that they, they think that a local cop is a serial killer, and they're um, trying to gather, gather evidence against him, basically. It sounds super good to me. I'm not sure of anybody else who has seen it or your thoughts. If you have seen this one, though, let me know down below. Sleepaway Camp is a favorite of mine. I haven't seen it for years and years and Matthew has never seen it so of course if you know how that ends um, it's gonna be it's gonna take him by surprise I think um, and I can't wait to see his reactions. So it's definitely a favorite and fits right in with the summer slashers and all of the classics that I've been wanting to rewatch lately. Lisa Frankenstein so not necessarily fitting totally within this genre of like summer slashers but definitely one that I've been wanting to see. I missed it in the theater so we're gonna throw it on now because it is on Amazon Prime. Now and Then is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's one of my favorite soundtracks of all time and it revolves around a group of friends uh, I believe in the 70s. I believe it's the early 70s and it has a huge cast and a lot of big names and I have an undying love for this movie and it's just you know this group of friends who it's their last summer that they're super close as they're getting older and then they reconnect in their adult years. I love it so so much. Three Ninjas. Uh, I have an undying love for 90s martial arts movies and this one is definitely one of my favorites about these three boys who go to spend time with their grandfather during their summer vacation and they learn all the uh, the secrets to being ninjas and uh, all of the comedy and shenanigans that comes along with it. And then the last one on my list for now anyway is The Sandlot and this is one of my favorite movies as well and one that has a lot of heart. The soundtrack is great, it's funny, and it also fits in with those uh, like sports themed movies that I loved in the 90s as well. So I definitely had to put this one on the list. I can't remember the last time I watched it. I don't think it was that long ago. Matt's probably going to get mad at me for putting it on again, but it's just, it's so good. Even if we put it on in the background, it gives me all of those warm feels and, um, you know, it just never gets old to me. And then actually my brain is still turning as I'm doing this video. So three more that I have to watch. One of them is Poltergeist. It came out in June of my birthday year, 1982, and I was born in July. So it's, not only one of my favorite movies and it has a lot of heart, it has all of those family feels um, that I love. It's one of my favorite movies but it's from my birth year. It came out around my birthday so my mom would have been pregnant with me. Maybe it's one of the reasons I love horror um, but it is one of my favorites so we definitely have to watch Poltergeist. Another one is Heavyweights and uh, I watched this one not that long ago and this one has a lot of heart too. It's very much a coming of age story and if you've ever seen Dodgeball, Ben Stiller plays very much the same sort of character in Heavyweights as he did in Dodgeball. And this is one where if, if I read Fat Camp by James Sabata, um, this one would definitely be a good uh, corresponding film to watch at the same time because it, it very much has the same sort of story going on except one is a slasher and one is like a you know a kids movie but very much the same sort of themes. And then the third, and the third one that I wanted to mention is Camp Cucamonga. It's from 1990. It's a little bit more obscure. I, I don't hear a whole lot of people talking about it and I don't really know why because it's a really really good summer camp movie and it says here standard camp shenanigans and romance among the counselors and the campers at a lakefront summer camp and it has a lot of really big uh, names in it from back in the day so uh, there's Jennifer Aniston, Candace Camion Bure, uh, uh, Danica McKellar from The Wonder Years, Brecken Meyer, Josh Saviano and, and on and on. It has a really really star-studded cast. It's super cheesy. 
like I said, I don't I don't hear anybody talking about it, but I watched it I don't know how many times when I was a kid and I haven't seen it since I was a kid. So um, this is one that just popped into my head. I'm really, really glad it did because I need to go find it. I'm sure I can rent it out from somewhere or maybe I can find it on YouTube. I'm not really too sure. Um, but that's it. I'm going to stop the video here because it's getting way too long. So this is my summer pile of possibilities when it comes to books and movies. I'm really hoping to get my groove back into my reading. It's been such a tough year um, when it comes to like my mental health and my reading uh, abilities and everything. So I've just been, you know, concentrating on giving myself a little bit of grace and doing what I can. But there's some really, really great books and movies here and I'm hoping to get to as many as I can. So I will do a wrap up at the end of the summer going right into spooky season. I'm so, so excited that uh, I'm starting to see people's videos here on YouTube about things that they're finding around for Halloween and for spooky season. I've started booking in a couple of events and stuff, so I'll be sure to share that with you guys um, in upcoming videos. But for now, I'm going to stop it here. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a question or a comment down below because you know I love chatting with you guys. But until next time, stay spooky, everybody. Bye!